Welcome to Alien Theorist Theorizing Case File 212, the Cisco Grove UFO. I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And I'm Andrew in a little box. Yeah, but stuck Andrew in the, in the studio box because um, BC is flooding, yeah. breaking, been burning. Place is fucked. End times, baby. End times. It's, yeah, if you're listening to this, we're a little late tonight. And to be honest, at any point in time, it feels like, you know, the the cracks of hell might open up and just swallow us all at this point. Uh, BC, like Zell said, is under a state of emergency. Basically, all our major highways have catastrophic damage from mudslides and excessive rain. Hundreds and hundreds of people are trapped on highways. Uh, cities are completely, multiple cities are completely flooded to the point where everyone has to evacuate. Uh, it's, it's absolutely wild. insane. Dude, portions of the highway, like of the Coquihalla, have just disappeared. Yeah. They like no longer exist. Just washed right out. Gone. It's, oh, it's, it's fucked, wild because man. I was on the roads yesterday and literally just missed catastrophe after catastrophe. And just snuck by and got home. Like Brady they was were right literally, the head of the storm. they were literally there was like a mudslide, <laughs> a tidal mud pool just following us, <laughs> basically, because this, everywhere we went, you missed conspiracy, flooded immediately after we left. Well, it's funny like we we were we were sitting oh, so in you a were the heralds. Instance. You were the heralds yeah. of construction. That's Two like... of the four horsemen. <laughs> Yeah. Roll through. Well, it's, dude, it's funny. We were at Cosmic Channels, and we're, people are like, where's Brain? I was like, well, he's probably buried. Wait, no, it's, Zell's like, where's Brain? Oh, Brain's dead. And I'm like, well, just relax. Wait, wait, I mean, wait, like, wait we should say that. Be. There's a yeah. fucking chance here. <laughs> he's dead. Yeah. Maybe. I, Could be. That joke might is, get old real quick. Yeah. <laughs> this is how close. Uh, at one point, there was a mudslide ahead of us. We had already got detoured from one. We'd already crossed a bridge that an hour later was completely wiped out. Um, we were sitting in Princeton waiting for a highway update to see if we'd be able to sneak through a detour. Uh, we are eating at this pub, and uh, we got the green light being like, yo, highway is open. You, there's a detour. You, like, you basically got to go right now. Um, the weather's looking bad, so go before they shut it down. We left. An hour after we left, the whole city of Princeton was flooded, and that bar was underwater that we were at. An like hour after that we were there. That is so fucked. It's so right? insane. Crazy. If we would have waited 45 more minutes, we wouldn't have had to pay. <laughs> For anything ever again, because you'd be dead. No, but we but, made it, uh, and we thought even today, then the power was going out in West Kelowna. And we're like, okay, well, maybe the podcast might just be over. But Andrew braved a dark, lightless ride over the bridge, and he's we put him in the studio closet and he's here boys it, the power's been out at my place since what two when did we or three when did we hop on three o'clock yeah, yeah like, three o'clock yeah just gone fucking disappeared it, it's gonna get interesting in british columbia because all roads out of the lower mainland of vancouver all major highways gone like i said catastrophic damage like multiple mudslide bridges gone and we're already in a supply shock and there is now no way for goods to get from Vancouver to anywhere else in BC or Western Canada. No, no big, no big deal. Just our main port. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's so frustrating. The only port in BC. <laughs> Having said that, I'm okay on Vancouver Island, so maybe you know. For now. Maybe I can send you guys some Mister Noodles or something when you need it. <laughs> I would. Yeah. I'll fed us some Mister Noodles. <laughs> yeah, you can only fly shit here. So, anyways, we'll uh. We'll keep you updated as the storm um, continues. And I also, before we get going, I got to give it up to Dan for finding this one. This case <laughs> file we're about to talk to is fucking wild, man. It is great. Like, might be one of the best single accounts uh, of a UFO encounter. Wow, when you say best, you mean like most entertaining. Detailed one-on-one yeah. -on -one yeah. Yeah. encounter. The best singular account of a UFO encounter it is yeah i will agree i'm 100 agreeing with brain that this is a this is a very very uh or an absolute gem of a case file <laughs> but i found this uh you know uh scouring around uh for case files as i normally do so um 
like we said before, this one's uh, usually referred to as the Cisco Grove UFO encounter. And uh, most of the information comes directly from the source. And uh, it was uh, a lot of the stuff that we're going to be talking about it comes from the book, if you want to pick it up, uh, uh, The Aliens in the Forest, The Cisco UFO Encounter by Noe Torres and Ruben Uriarte. And it was published in 2011. Uh, this actual story didn't really gain a lot of traction until the early 2000s, even though that the events uh, that are described in the book took place in 1964. And the primary person uh, that, that had the encounter, uh, Donald Shrum, uh, who, when he when he came out and talked about this and wanted to put the story down into a book, um, he was 73 at the time. So 2011. So, um, well, and honestly, like I think his name should be when you think UFO encounter and abduction or anything like that, you should be thinking Donnie Shrum before you think of Travis Walton. hundred uh, percent. You know, he should, this guy should be up there with Betty and Barney Hill. Well, didn't they, like, didn't they make a movie about this guy? Run into aliens. Didn't they make a movie about this guy? I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty positive. Fucking, this is the basis for Predator. Or Rambo Two. Yeah. I mean, yes. you're not far yeah. off. Like, it's not far off. A short time later, he would see what he started. What you they refer to in the story, and what he seemed to kind of think of as some type of scout ship, a second craft, smaller craft that had exited out of uh, the larger so he saw he saw some sort of mothership at first this thing and then well, yeah you could he's... refer to it as the you know for the purpose of the story you could refer to it as a mothership and then the second object the baby ship. Kind of, given the size the that ship. that makes a lot of sense he saw these short stocky beans emerge from the kind of tree line from outside of the forest that we was and then he would describe these these creatures as humanoid looking of like where he's a little bit farther than the other two that have actually seemed to notice him. Then he hears a, like a crashing thrashing around sound, like seeming to come directly from the forest uh, in his direction. And when he looks over to the source of the sound, he sees these two huge eyes coming toward him and he describes these things looking as like two flashlights hooked together so oh. like two beams of light like wow. fucking iron giant like yeah you know coming out and um he described but you know not iron giant like nice you know white warm white color it is a reddish orange color that he uh he described as the color of fire Oof. and these oh things God. illuminated the face and the jaw of a robot like creature oh my god that was rapidly approaching where shrum was uh perched in his tree was it screaming ignore me <laughs> ignore <laughs> me venture brothers <laughs> fucking throwback wasn't the observer hmm. wasn't the observer now <laughs> at this point <laughs> now you Shrum's, have the shrum stated at this point he wasn't a hundred percent sure before, but now he knew they were after him. That this is the final. Or the two, uh, the two. He was like, you know, maybe ninety percent. Now a robot's coming out of the woodworks. He's like, okay, no, they're here for me. Um, there was no smell, and then, but he felt like the air was like being pulled out of his lungs. He was having trouble he suffocating, uh, breathing, gasping for air, and then blacking out. So something that interrupts the oxygen exchange in his lungs and he gets hypoxic yep. and fucking passes out. Passes out. So he's up in the tree. Fuck. He passes out. Does he fall? Or what's, what's happening? No, he's, now? Oh, he's, he's in his not harness. strapped in yet. Oh, he's, he's not, not strapped, strapped in, in yet. yet. Well, how happens. does he not pass out? How does he not fall out then? He well, slumps he over ball. the branch and he, he kind of falls into his bow. That's propped him up. So he kind of has like mm. the foresight to kind of put his bow down and then like he fall. He said that he fell across his bow and that kept him from completely just tumbling out. So I, of I, imagine, trying, I need I a diagram here, boys. I, need I to, imagine he's <laughs> straddling a branch with his back against the tree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then he puts the bow across and as he falls, he falls. So he's almost like tabletopped. Yeah. But the, the 
when the fucking branch, like you're going to lean to a side. You're not going to be perfectly, yeah. across the, how big is the branch? You're just going to fucking topple over. Yeah, it depends Maybe how he's going to teeter totter that shit and fucking fly right he's off. He's got spectacular balance, even when he passes out. I don't know, boys. I just think if it's a thick, if it's a thick, a thick branch, right? Like he, he might just topple onto it. Yeah, if and it's a big ass branch. Like, or, yeah. or as we said, like he falls onto his bow. So his bow is, maybe there's two other branches beside. His bow is wedged there. He falls. There and it's kind of like a shelf. That, it kind of like yeah, falls on a shelf like sense. that. There we go. Okay, it's all solved. Let's go with that. Yeah, I can buy that. So Shrum blacks out from this this vapor, which seems to to send him into like a, a you know, knock him out for a second. Yeah, and then he says he remembers waking up when it probably, he yeah, kind of estimated then, to be around. Then when he PM. wakes up, he stated he, you know, he wasn't hundred percent sure before, but now he knew that you were after him. He was. So he's. We've wait. said that three times now. No, What's he happening? Was, he was ninety percent when he's seen the two humanoids with maybe yeah, like, other ones. So then he moves up to like ninety-two. He's like ninety-five. No, no, he's yeah, like the robot comes. He's ninety-seven with the robot. The robot yeah. poisons him, <laughs> tries to poison him out of the tree. Now he's like, okay, he's like, yeah, I think okay. we got it now. Yeah, but listen. To keep up to date with all things alien theorist theorizing, follow us across social media on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and Facebook. For updates on new videos and content on YouTube, don't forget to click like and subscribe and hit that notifications button to keep those eyes on the skies with alien theorists theorizing.